gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium here at Brockton High School. And today it is the first game of a brand new season. And as always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Today I am joined alongside your Ward 4 School Committee representative, Brett Gormley. Brett, you talk about a new look program, new head coach, new uh, freshmen and JV coaches. Two returners from last year's roster, only four of these girls played JV last year. The head coach, Chris Connolly, good friends uh, of yours. Yeah, Chris Connolly and I have uh, actually coached together. He, he's been a teacher at the Davis School for quite some time. This year he went over to West. Um, I had the chance to coach softball with him uh, for two seasons. And uh, Chris is an excellent coach. He's, uh, he's really a basketball coach. He's also a baseball umpire. And he's had a lot of success as a coach, he was at East Bridgewater. Uh, he also won a national championship in AAU. And uh, looking forward to see what he does with this group. So as we mentioned, the two returning uh, players from last year, Jade Went and Alicia Fernandez. Elizabeth Williams split time between JV and Varsity. Mm -hmm. And she takes the three. Ooh. One of the co-captains, as only a sophomore, Elizabeth Williams voted on by her teammates for that honor. That's quite the honor. You don't see a lot of sophomores captaining varsity teams. Usually a special player gets that privilege. And talking with head coach Chris Connolly before the game, the first couple of games going to be that feeling out what kind of team are we, what's our identity. The strategy is get the ball down low to one of the big guys in Wint or Fernandez. Fernandez being recruited by colleges. There's three of them here tonight scouting. Miss Fernandez. Annalisa is a very good athlete. I actually had the chance to coach her in softball. She had never played before, and she was probably our best player uh, as an eighth grader, which is pretty impressive. Softball is a very tough sport to pick up at that age for anybody. Uh, I've seen her play basketball a few times. She's a really good athlete. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing her play a little bit tonight. Well, through the first minute of this game, we are still scoreless, zero to zero between the Marshfield Rams and the Brockton Boxers. Marshfield is what should be a fairly scary team, ranked number three in the state. They're captained by the senior guard, Cassie Caldwell, who is a phenomenal player. Talking with head coach Connolly, he said, She's the one, we're gonna double cover her, we're gonna do whatever we can to prevent her from getting the ball because she can put up a lot of points. Good rebound in here by Brockton, but can't put it away. Three offensive boards taken by the senior co-captain, Brooke Wheaton. And she stepped over the end line. I didn't think we'd be scoreless this far into the game. That makes two of us. Opening night jitters. Looking at the scores of the earlier games, the freshman team, a lot to a little. 55 to five, the final score in that one. Marshfield with the victory. The JV game was 33 to 21, with Marshfield getting the victory in that one. And scoreless for the first two minutes of the first quarter in this game, and Alicia Fernandez Ooh. committing the travel as she tried to get it out to number 12, Jasoma Montron. Everyone seems to be pressing here. It's, uh, it's always tough opening night. Caldwell stopping and popping for three and it's good and Marshfield drawing first blood. Two minutes and 15 seconds into the first quarter. Three to nothing Rams. It is worth noting, Marshfield wearing their away black jerseys, a little bit of green and white trim. Brockton in their in home whites with a black stripe down the side and red trim around the lettering. So Brett, a lot of extracurricular activities happening this week at Brockton High. Yes, Of course, absolutely. we're on one side of the school for the basketball opener. On the other side of the school, just a quick side note, the school was built backwards, so if yes. it was built according to the blueprints <laughs> and what it was supposed to be, we'd be sitting at the band's Christmas concert right now. Yeah, I, I like to tell that fact to people too, and then people from Brockton 
when they sit and think about it, they say, oh, yeah. There you go. The Fine Arts Building looks very nice. <laughs> Get cast. Good work. It does make hey, sense it would job, be facing Cass. Belmont good Street. Job. If that happened today, it would be a pretty big hey, scandal. So you've got, out of the, what, 42, 4,300 kids, you've probably got, give or take, 500 or so participating in extracurricular activities here at Brockton High tonight. Tonight? Good job, good job. Just tonight. There's a lot. Because you've got the two bands, yep. the two choirs, mm -hmm. the three basketball teams. Yep. Yeah, I'd say it's you're not too far off. I may have undershot that. I don't know. It's going to be north of 100 in the, in well, the, uh, the just, senior band. Just here, there's 45 ladies participating in basketball today. Went for three, and Brockton's on the board. We're all tied up. Four minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Nice stroke there. Caldwell trying to go shot for shot. No good. Went with the rebound, and it is taken out by Marshfield, so Brockton will inbound it. Caldwell has great form. You, go, you see her snap that wrist. It, it closes like a door hinge. Just snaps right down. I didn't s think we'd see only two field goals. And Annalisa Fernandez down low didn't get up quite high enough. Yeah, that pass was a little too deep. She ended up getting buried under the hoop. It's always tough on that high low. Williams fouled by Brooke Wheaton. Call for the push, Brockton inbounding it. Jayla Smith, one of the stars of the Brockton Lady Boxers soccer team. One of my favorite topics, the dual sport, tri-sport athletes. A mm -hmm. lot of them here at Brockton High. Now went in the paint. Out to Montrond, her Ooh. three no good. And it's going to be out of bounds off of Marshfield and Wheaton again. Brockton's getting a lot of looks. They're just knock, knocking them down. Head coach of the Rams, Rick Fredericks, in his 18th season at the helm of the Rams. Ah. It's Aaron Pass and Caldwell all the way in off the glass and in. And the Rams take a two-point lead. Elizabeth Williams switching from center to guard this year. That's interesting. Didn't know that. She handles the ball pretty well. Go further down. Coach, she's going to go further down to the X. As always is the case. Always helping out, The visiting out, team <laughs> always thinks that we are the check-in table. <laughs> We're at center court. They're going to go one window down. Next teller, this aisle is closed. Yeah, it's like when you go to Wendy's and that first window's closed. Exactly. <laughs> Wint is at the free throw line. Violation. And a violation against Brockton, so. You gotta wait till that ball hits the, the rim. Which is different than the way it is in the pros. Yes. The pros, the second the ball leaves the shooter's hand, you can start moving. And that's the way high school was for, actually when I was in high school, it was on the release. And then at some point during my career, they switched it to um, on the, on the uh, touch of the rim. We're going to talk about the talent of Jade Wint ripping the ball out Ooh. on the rebound and now going coast to coast, putting up a shot no good. I like the Wheaton. way Wynn plays. The one touch pass oh. again blocked by Williams. Now Jade Wint comes up with a loose ball. And a reach by Caldwell. Jade Wynn showing her goods tonight. Very nice. She's got a lot of tools. Here's the interesting part of this. Four team fouls against the Rams. Oh. A tip against Caldwell. So Elizabeth Williams able to pick up the loose ball on the other side of the court. Nice pass. Down low for Jayla Smith off the glass and in. I see why Coach Conley moved her out to the wing. She sees the floor very well. She doesn't look 100% comfortable out there yet, though. Caldwell overhead pass down low for number four, oh. Catherine Mall. And she is fouled. I 
She had it, but she came down. Anytime you come down, the ref's going to call that on you. You watch the Celtics games, you hear them talk about Baines and the verticality. He jumps straight up, doesn't get the foul. Jump at an angle, creates some contact. Yep. You own that vertical space as a defender. Something I learned as a high school player and used as much as I could because I uh, couldn't jump, but I'm very tall. Annalie Lorenzo in for her, her first minutes oh. of the season. A turnover and a layup no good. Went with the rebound. Lorenzo to Fernandez. Oh, nice drop step. Fernandez step. spinning off the glass and in. Good finger roll there for Annalicia Fernandez. Nice move, nice left hand, nice drop step, very solid. Captain, where you going? Jump ball, excellent work by Williams. But Marshfield will retain possession. Two minutes left, and who saw this one coming? Brockton with a 7-6 to six lead. Six minutes into the first quarter. And Brockton's not doing anything fancy. That three. No, no gimmicks. No pressing. Just straight up man-to-man -man half court defense. Now Marshfield's picking up the pressure. Get a man-to-man -man full court pressure. Just some token pressure. Williams bringing it up. Can't pick up your dribble out there. Nice move. Williams creating some space. No foul, but retains possession. Off ah. the glass, no good. Brought down by big number Kate McCarthy. All the way in now out to Caldwell, intercepted by Lorenzo. Ah. Caldwell takes it back all the way in off the glass and in. And a timeout called by Marshfield with 1.23 left in the first quarter. 8-7 to seven Rams on top of Brockton in a low-scoring I like to call this a gut check lunch pail type of game. Definitely. They're working for everything they're getting here. Nothing's coming easy tonight. So Brockton's had a ton of good looks in the first quarter. A lot of offensive rebounds. Shooting not the strong suit, but other than that, there's not much to complain about. No, they look pretty good. Um, the fact that they're getting the looks is promising. Both teams are getting pretty clean looks, uh, and eventually somebody's going to start hitting them. That's that's what will be interesting to see as the game unfolds. Every team makes their run. That's just the story of basketball. It's a game of runs, and um, it'll be interesting to see who comes out and makes their first run. Brockton can make a run first. They've got a very good chance of win winning this game. Some of the shooting jitters could be the opening night butterflies. Yep, absolutely. As we mentioned, the, the new coach, the, the completely new look program. They just got a freshman and JV coach hired yesterday. So those two teams not getting a lot of practice in their coach's system. Nope. Coach Conley's had a lot of exposure with uh, everyone in the program the last couple weeks. Some full court man-to-man -man pressure here. Coach Connolly actually taught, he said, four of these girls down at the Davis. He did. Williams, a deep three off Ooh. the glass, no good. Ball loose in the paint, taken by the Rams. And out to Dominic Davis. Davis carrying the ball out of play. Brockton takes over. I know that he taught in Alicia and Anna Lee because they were on our softball team. <laughs> Two very good athletes. I actually coached Annalie's brother in football and track. And her dad is actually a colleague of mine in Boston. He's a Boston Public Schools teacher. Floater around the world and out. The lid on that rim. They've had about three or four rim out. Opening night jitters brings me back to 1997 where this guy right here was sitting behind us, Coach Manny DeBarros, at the freshman team. We were a pretty uh, highly regarded team as seniors, and we went to Malden Catholic and lost. We looked up at the clock and thought, isn't there more time left? These guys aren't as good as us. And we ended up meeting them later on and beat them by 30. So 
Opening night isn't always an indication of how your season is going to go. This one out of play off of Elizabeth Williams. 24.6 left in the first quarter. In the opening night here at Staff Gymnasium, Malden Catholic has transformed into one of those all-sport powerhouses. The BC High in that group, mm -hmm. Severian Catholic Memorial. They've always been good at hockey. Always. Not, not, not basketball at that time. But hockey's a, a big deal up there, especially that part of the state. Coast Williams to coast all the way Williams. in off the glass and in. Brockton's got the lead with 12 seconds left to go. Williams is looking more comfortable out there. Interesting note, Williams' mother played at the University of Maine. A deep three as time is running out. No good. Brockton with the rebound. They will not be able to get a shot off. Nine to eight, the score with Brockton in the lead at the end of the first quarter. Brett, what did you see in that first quarter? How does Brockton have a lead against the number three ranked team in the state? What do you think? Well, Brockton's working hard, and they're doing a lot of things right. They're not turning the ball over. I think they had one turnover, maybe two. Uh, that's a big part of uh, success against a good team. you really got to protect the ball. Uh, turnovers kill you in every sport, but um, especially in basketball when you're playing a team that is highly ranked, and they, don't, they will feed off of that. If you're a good team, you're going to feed off of turnovers. Um, and I suspect as the season goes on, that's how Coach Conley's probably going to play with this group because they're pretty athletic. At the, um, excuse me, on the other hand, four team fouls for Marshfield, two for the boxers. It was a very clean quarter by the boxers. Yes. Yeah, they've been uh, moving their feet pretty well. Um, Marshfield's been shooting pretty early into the, uh, into the offense. They're not getting past the first or second uh, pass in the offense which for a team of this caliber, I'm a little surprised. Who you have now? Who you have? Who's got one? Who's got three? Know what you have? Let's go. Brockton's also have a, has a very short bench. They've only played six people. Maybe seven, but not very long. Back to the starting lineup to start the quarter. But that's to be expected with such a small number of returners. Very nice move there by Annalisa Fernandez. Her shot nope. coming up just short. Yep. Dominic Davis with the rebound. The Caldwell for three. No good off the back of the rim. And Williams is fouled after grabbing the rebound. And that is the third foul on Dominic Davis, the junior guard. Help. Help. Williams. To Fernandez. Montrod was open at the top of the key and a jump ball forced by the Rams and they will take over possession. Fernandez is definitely pressing. I think she's feeling the, uh, the pressure of being a captain and a senior and, and the best player on the team. She needs to let the game come to her, give what, take what the defense gives her. Nice block there by Annalisa Fernandez. Lily Jarvis driving baseline. Brockton comes up with Oof. the ball, and Jade Wint was fouled. Very impressed with Jade Wint tonight. Hey, 50, right? You got it. You got it. 50, 50. Head coach Rick Fredericks calling for that man to man press. Now Fernandez is able to break it. Working her way inside all the way, coast to coast, off the glass, oh, and go. it falls in. And Fernandez upset she didn't get an and one. So look for Marshfield to make an adjustment on that press. The ref having a little word with Fernandez saying, listen, don't yell at me for no calls. It's judgment. I'm the ref. You're the player. Yes. Can't do that. You're never going to win that argument. After scoring that bucket, Fernandez turned around to the ref and said, she yep. hit me, she yep. hit me. Where's the call? You never get that call. Never happens. They're never going to change their mind. And I think <laughs> this, I mean, this is completely out there, but if a player early in the game yells at a referee, they're going to have a harder time drawing a call for the rest of that game. Yep. You can talk to the referee. You can... Make some suggestions. 
<laughs> you have to be very careful about how you do it. You can definitely work a referee. Um, but as a high school player, it's pretty rare to see a high school player have enough savvy and self-control, really, to work a referee. Kaylee Sullivan out to Jarvis. Jarvis with a long box two, out there no by good. Fernandez. Fernandez with the rebound out to Montron. Montron's three rebound off the front of the rim. No good. Dominic Davis with the rebound. And Sullivan's layup goes 11 to 10. Brockton with a one point edge. 624 left in the second quarter. We're starting to see a lot more transition basketball going on. A lot of fast breaks. Williams loses it. Montron picks up the loose ball. Back to Williams. Williams to Wint. Went back out to Williams. Williams a three from way downtown Ooh. off the front of the rim and out of play. That was pretty deep. We've seen that a few times tonight for both teams. The three from well beyond the line. Yes. As a coach, I would not like that. Unless you hit it. Used <laughs> to be the style of the, the boys team here. Yes. Back in the, the days of Leo Medina who could hit it from yes. half court. Now three from Sullivan, no good. Brockton with the rebound. This is Annalicia Fernandez who is mounting her case for a triple-double. She needs to mount the uh, offense. Fernandez looking for Williams behind the back, and now it's a two-on-one. Jarvis lays it up and in. Fernandez needs a break. And a timeout called by head coach Chris Connolly. So, Brett, tell us about Chris Connolly. Who is he? What makes him qualified to be the coach of the Brockton Boxers Lady uh, basketball team? Well, Chris has been a ba varsity basketball coach before in East Bridgewater, as I've said. He's, he's been a JV coach and a freshman coach at other schools. Um, and he was a high school player. So he's, he's been around the game for a really long time. Uh, he's also very good with the kids. That's the biggest thing that I like about Chris is how he handles his players and his students. My daughter was a student of his. Uh, when she was in eighth grade a few years ago. And uh, I've got to see him around the athletes at the Davis School. And I know some of the ladies that he's coached in basketball. And they've all got great things to say about him. They like to play for him. They, they have an enjoyable experience. And that's what I want to see out of the coaches at Brockton High School is they're providing a good experience for the students where they're enjoying playing the game, being on a team, being a teammate, representing their school, and winning. Because I think if you do all those other things, you're going to win. This is a school with great athletes, and if you have athletes that want to come to practice every day and they want to work hard, you're going to win. And you have to create an environment and a culture that encourages that. So I think Coach Conley is able to do that. Um, he has the ability to do that. It remains to be seen if he can do it, and I'm looking forward to watching him build this program. Discussion over who has possession. Oh, Brockton called the timeout. The still, still sticking with this man-to-man. -man. And it's working Cassie Caldwell in alone off the glass and in. Working well. Couple turnovers in a row. Brockton's press break is not functioning properly. Out of play off of Brockton. So Marshfield storming back to take a three-point lead with five minutes left in the second quarter. Oh, in order to break that press, Brockton needs to stop trying to dribble through it. That's exactly what Marshfield wants them to do. They're going to trap. As you can see, Caldwell chasing Went. Great play by Caldwell. Two rims collide. Caldwell and Dominic Davis. Marshfield's going to let you get that ball right over half court and then the trap. And that's where their steals are coming from. That's pretty much every press that you'll see in high school. Montron hits the floor and Davis now in. Davis lays it off the glass and in. 16-11, the Rams on top. Long pass for number 24, that is Jamari Johnson. Getting her first minutes of the season. Overhead pass to Jayla Smith, then out of play. 
off of the rims and Fernandez and Williams will come back into the game trying to stop the attack of the Marshfield Rams. You can see the inexperience of the folks that are on the court right now. Coach Conley switching a little experience for some more rested players here. Williams out to number four, her three no good. That was yeah. Annalie Lorenzo. Lorenzo fighting for the rebound, loose ball picked up by Jarvis. Jarvis's pass, a step and a half behind Kaylee Sullivan who came back to oh. get it. Davis fouled down low by Johnson. Quite the collision. Davis at the line for two shots. Four minutes and seven seconds left in the second quarter. Marshfield up by five. And now we're going to see Rebecca Tannis into the game. Apologies if I butchered the first name. Looks like Rebecca. Loose ball picked up by Lorenzo to Fernandez to Williams. Williams turning back outside. Lorenzo calling for it. It goes to Fernandez. Fernandez dribbling, trying to create some space around Davis. And Fernandez is fouled on her way in, and that will put the boxers in a one and one situation. They're over the limit. Brockton now in a bonus situation with three minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the <coughs> second quarter. Fernandez, as we saw last year, very good free throw shooter. Ooh, I thought you jinxed her. High, high rainbow and it fell, so Brockton earning the second shot. Trying to make this a one possession game is Annalicia Fernandez. It's going to come up short. And that's Cassie Caldwell with the rebound. Down low to big number 10 and her turnaround jumper is good. Hannah Peterson. The true center is this Hail Mary is through the back of the end zone. I don't know if number 10's a lefty, but that was a nice left. Nice soft touch right on the top of the rim. Rolled right in. It's not too, too often we see a true center. No. In basketball. Hannah Peterson is just that, especially in high school. I like to say they haven't existed in the NBA since the 2003 draft. It's been a while. The game has changed. And I think the, the last remaining holdout... Maybe Pau Gasol? Yeah. Some would say Boogie Cousins. But he's a very versatile offensive player. And he doesn't play defense. The last true, true center that I remember watching would be Shaq. Well, there's a few actually, um, like the name escapes me. He's the Denver center. I would call him a true center. Um, there's a few guys out there, but they're not featured the way they used to be. You don't see a lot of posting up of big men anymore. There's a lot of dribble drive. There's a lot of motion offenses, high 1-4 Princeton type of offenses. Elizabeth Williams now, seven on the shot clock. Fernandez down low, spinning. And That's it's gonna be a ball. jump ball. Marshfield will take over again. Andre Drummond. Yes. There's We're a being center. told from the Mad Dog research team. <laughs> That's a good call. Andre Drummond. He's much improved in his free throw shooting this year. 60%. I last remembered Drummond playing for the Detroit Pistons. I forgot he was... Oh, he's still on the Pistons. I think you're thinking of Greg Monroe. Greg Monroe. Monroe was on the Bucks. Drummond's on the Pistons. 
Just played the Celts on Sunday. Detroit could be, should be a scary team. Yeah, they play a, a very... Avery Bradley and... Yeah, they play a tough brand of basketball. Detroit basketball, you could say. This jumper, layup rather, off the bottom of the rim. And it's going to be out of play off of Cassie Caldwell. Just someone Montron doing the work. And Jade Wint going to be coming back into the game. If you're head coach Connolly, I've already seen all I need to see. you got to get the conditioning up there, but... Fernandez and Wint are going to be your rocks. They're going to have to play the majority of the minutes. Absolutely. You just got to find a good combination. Nice shot there by Montron. Montron way downtown. That's a big three. A five-point game a lead in this game is a very big lead. Errant pass for Davis intended for Jackie Russell. And Brockton will take over. Minute 15 left to go in the first half. 20 to 15, Rams on top of the boxers. It's been a very competitive gut check, lunch pail, hard fought game. Davis now has only four personal fouls against her. And she comes out of the game as Jade Wint is at the line for two shots. Nice looking free throw there by Jade Wint. Rodney. Hey, Cass, you be the Rodney, how many fouls on 15? Brockton pulls within three. Two of two at the line for Jade Wint, 20 to 17, one possession game. Three fouls against Dominique Davis, and Brockton fighting for it. As Peterson able to kick it out. Ah. And Fernandez comes up with a loose ball. 45 seconds to go. Fernandez with it to Wint down low. Her shot short. Two boxers scrapping for it, and a foul committed, I believe, by Wint. Both teams are battling pretty hard here tonight. Kaylee Sullivan back into the game. She replaces Jackie Russell. Caldwell to Sullivan. Sullivan for three, no good. Tipped back home by Peterson down low. And that's just sheer height. Ooh, back that's court. a backcourt violation. Good eyes by the ref to catch this, the half step over the line that Elizabeth Williams was. Shot clock off, 17 and a half left to go in the first half. 22-17, Marshfield up by five. Marshfield holding on for a last Rebound. shot. This one off the back of the rim and out. Sullivan to Caldwell. Caldwell's last second three, no okay. good. Williams with the rebound, the buzzer sounds. And we're at the half, a lot closer of a game than I thought we were gonna see. 22-17, Brett, what'd you see in the first half? Well, uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by the boxers. Uh, they are hanging with this very good team. Uh, I can tell that Caldwell's a really good player and her shots just aren't falling. Uh, she's got a great looking shot. She looks for it. She's been getting getting open. Um, she's going to start hitting them. It's going to happen. You can you know with a player like that. So I think Brockton has a chance to to hang in there and win this game. But I think Coach Conley's got a challenge of figuring out a good rotation to keep his top players in there because the bench. I don't know if we have a lot of ready for primetime players there yet. Well, the score at halftime again: 22-17. 22-17, the new look Brockton Boxers trailing the third ranked in the state Marshfield Rams by five. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going biking. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi babe, how was school today? Hi dad, it was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. 
because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort. Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Brockton Boxers and the Marshfield Rims here on opening night of the 2017-2018 season. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. I'm joined alongside your Ward 4 School Committee representative, Brett Gormley. Brett, it was a scratching, clawing, Gut check, lunch pail, hard fought first half. Marshfield comes in to the third quarter with a five point edge, 22 to 17. They definitely won't be showing that tape in instructional videos. It was, it was pretty ugly. But these ladies are working very hard on both sides of the ball, both teams. Jade went with a nice drop step turnaround with her left hand. Not an easy thing to do. We've already seen the, what I think anyway, are going to turn into the stars. Yep. Of the Brockton Boxers, Jade Wynn, Elizabeth Williams, and Alicia Fernandez. Fernandez has quite the fan base here tonight. That includes the entire basketball team of Wheaton College, along with the coaching and scouting reps from two other colleges. Oh, well, that's great. Didn't know they were going to see two other stars that they can start scouting in a few years. Absolutely. And Elizabeth Rebound. Williams and Jade Wint. I'm sure they know who Caldwell is. Oh, yeah. Jade Wint is a junior this year. And Williams only a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And elected by her teammates as one of the co-captains. Along with Annalisa Fernandez. Well, if you're a local college and you're a Division three school, you can come to Brockton High and watch a varsity sport, which whatever you're involved in as a coach, and pick out a player. If you can play varsity at Brockton High School, you can play at, at least the Division Three level. Uh, that's something that I've learned is over the course of my 25 years of being around Brockton High. Turnover there by number 15. We see that at UMass Boston with Jelani Jackson, who is starring mm -hmm. there as a freshman who was preceded by Chantel Jordan, who went here. She had a good career for the Beacons. After a very good career here with the Boxers. Leo Medina playing for UMass Boston. Leo did play there. Carl Joseph played there. Carl, Carl Joseph, the all-state high jump, right? I don't know if he won all-states. He jumped in the spring of his senior year. Nice transition bucket there by the big center, number 10. But Carl did become a track star and jumped at least 6'4 as a senior. The only time he ever jumped and ran in high school and went on to UMass Boston and had a very good track career along with a very good basketball career. Made all-conference team a few times and um, won a division, I think two division one track meets. Jumped seven feet in the high jump. And football was his first sport. Carl Joseph? So that's how. No, basketball was his sport. He did right, play basketball, football. but then senior year he was. He tried uh, everything out his senior year, year. <laughs> <laughs> which is a shame because you think if he played now Sullivan all the way in off the glass, no good, but followed by Montron. If he tried everything as a freshman and found out what he likes and stuck with two or three sports for the rest of high school, 
he would have been very, very scary. Yeah, and that's the case for a lot of kids at the high school, especially with track. Uh, I've coached track here for a little while, um, and one reason why I got involved with the Brockton Track Club is because I saw a lot of players over the years jump onto the track as a junior or senior and have great success and potentially miss out on a scholarship opportunity as a track athlete because they were focused on uh, football, basketball, or whatever other sport they were playing. Marshfield capitalizing on these turnovers. Marshfield now with a seven point edge, 26 to 19, and a block by Hannah Peterson on Annalicia Fernandez. But out of play off of the Rams. Right, Carl Joseph graduating in 2011. Part of the greatest class in Brockton High history. As Fernandez hits a short Why is jumper. That, Matt? Well, we have an NFL player. Yes. We have me. Oh, okay. And we get Carl Joseph. Gotcha. Caldwell for three off the back of the rim. No good. Williams coming down with the rebound. I played in a student versus staff game here that year. And Carl Joseph stole the ball that Mr. Roseman threw to me and jumped about, got his elbow above the rim, and I stayed clear of that. Did you play in the student staff game in, in 2011? 2011? Yes. I played in the student staff game in 2011. Look at that. I knew you looked familiar. Maybe I blocked you. I was fouled <laughs> hard by a few science teachers. Hey, box out. Let's go. That doesn't surprise me. Those science teachers And Dr. Zach lot. was throwing elbows. Dr. Zach, she's, she's a tough lady. I wouldn't mess with Dr. Zach. If I ran to her in a dark alley, I'd run away. Fernandez, good from the line, 26-23, I believe. As a coach, if you have a, a big player like Andalicia that can hit free throws, it's really a luxury. Peterson for two, no good. Went with the rebound via bounce off of Annalie uh, Lorenzo's arm. Williams now handing it off to Fernandez. Fernandez behind the back, now through the legs. Working her way inside out to Lorenzo. Her three Boom. is good. Nothing nice but net. And it's a one-point game, 26-25. Brockton climbing back into it. Box is showing some spunk here. Jarvis off the glass and in to stop the boxers' momentum. Three-point edge for the Rams. The Rams going with the full court pressure again. Out to Lorenzo, three from the same spot. This one off the glass and in. Lorenzo, good on two straight three-point attempts, and it's all tied up at 28. And Lee Lorenzo, she's on fire. Williams comes up with the steal. Up to Lorenzo, Lorenzo out to number 22. Her three off the back of the rim, no good. Board tapped by Fernandez to Williams to Wint for three. It's going to come rebound. up short. Hannah, come on, baby. Able to keep her, her rebound in bounds at least for the moment before it trickles over the line in front of the boxer bench. And Brockton falling in love with the three a little bit here after hitting two. Peterson able to. Grab it with one arm behind her back, and now over the end line, Lorenzo thought that it was a foul against the boxers. Timeout no. called for by the Rams. 2.53 to go in the third quarter. All tied up 28 to 28. Start of the second half, Annalie Lorenzo. Yes, back to back threes for Annalie Lorenzo. Brockton's getting a lot of open looks. They, once, if they, like I said earlier, if they can start knocking them down, whoever heats up here is, is probably going to win at this point. Um, I thought that Marshfield about an was upset. pulling away. Yeah. You talk about an upset. You've got two returning players, uh, three if you count 
Elizabeth Williams, who didn't see too much time on varsity last year, mm -hmm. against the third ranked team in the state, according to the Globe. Mm -hmm. The Herald, I think, has the Rams at either four or five. The Globe, who didn't have the Brockton High Boys soccer team ranked. All season. All season. All season. Even after they won a state championship? And now they're seventh in the country and they're ranked. to uh, USA Today. So I don't know how much faith I'd put in the Globe's rankings. I looked that up. I saw that. I could not believe that boys ranking or non-ranking during the season. Williams out to Wint for three. It looks good, Ooh. and it is. And Brockton has a three-point lead with two and a half to go in the third quarter. So you mentioned the soccer team. I'm seeing a lot of similarities in the strategies. Quick one dribble, one touch passing by the botchers. Confident in your shots, get open as Lorenzo loses it. And now Williams comes up with the steal. This is a very, very sloppy game. Out to Lorenzo, she wants the three, and it's off the glass, no good. Boy, Lorenzo is not afraid to shoot the ball. Rams committing into the, another foul, Brooke Wheaton, guilty of this one. Fresh into the game is the height, Taylor Cast-Peterson. Oh, nice pass there by Annalicia Fernandez. Hey, you like getting it. Sullivan called for the hit. Taylor Cast-Peterson at the line. Another sophomore on this team. I think she's got some height. I think she was surprised she got the ball. Short on her first attempt. She was getting ready to clear out for the rebound. And Alicia Fernandez threw a great little wrap around pass. She's almost as tall as Peterson is. She is pretty tall. And good off on her second attempt off the glass. You gotta get some heights on these programs. <laughs> Cast Peterson is tasked with guarding Peterson. Cassie Caldwell. Nice left hand. Bobbing there. and weaving through the box of defense, and she's good off the glass. 32 30, it's a one possession game. Montron with the three, no good. Fernandez with the offensive rebound. Her shot is off I believe of Peterson. I believe she was trying to pass that. Caldwell all the way in, no good on the layup. Montron comes down with the loose ball to Elizabeth Williams. Williams doing a nice job here, taking care of the ball, running the offense. That was all off her knee. It's a good aggressive move there, though. We've got two floor generals, it looks like, Fernandez and Williams. Fernandez has the experience. Might have to go floor general for Fernandez and floor lieutenant for <laughs> Williams. So Caldwell loses this one. Hopefully by the end of the season possession. she'll be the floor captain. Nice and steal. Fernandez comes up with the steal. We're going to work on getting full stats, but she had five points at the half. Probably two dozen rebounds at this point in the game. A few steals. A few steals to go along with that. A few turnovers. Working on the triple-double. Fernandez triple team. Off the glass and in. No look. Beautiful move. Underhanded hook shot. And it's good. Brocked it up by four. Lorenzo coming down with the rebound on this one and slowing down the pace of the offense are the Brockton boxers. Fernandez getting around Caldwell, Ooh. looking in for Cast Peterson, no good. Caldwell back the other way. Williams, the only good boxer foul. back, and that is an excellent foul with 15 seconds left in the third quarter with the boxers up by three, uh, by four, excuse me. You know, I, fought, I, I just remembered something about Fernandez and Coach Conley. Coach Conley's the one who got her to play basketball. 
He saw her at the really? Davis school. Yeah, Davis is a K to eight. He saw her in fifth grade. Pulled her off onto his AAU team and began her career. And the rest is history. The rest is history. He's, he did a nice job because she's a very skilled player. She's got some things that she needs to work on her. her uh, <coughs> I think I'd like to see her as a you know, former coach. Let the game come to her a little bit more. But I'm sure she feels the pressure being a senior, wanting to carry the team on her back. Montron with a three off the side of the backboard. And pushed from behind was number four, Catherine Mall. 6.1 on the clock, a two point ball game, 34 32. As we near the end of the third quarter, and Julie Sullivan will come into the game replacing Sarah Kelly. Brockton going with a little full court pressure here. The ref losing patience on the the five second clock. A long three, they still had time to get that one closer. But the buzzer sounds, the third quarter has come to an end, 34 to 32. The boxers leading the Marshfield Rams. And Sarah Kelly is going to come back in for the Rams to begin the fourth quarter. Well. Female uh, women's basketball in Massachusetts could get a surprise tonight. The boxers are holding a two-point lead over the number three ranked team in the state. The boxers have no expectations on them this year. Busy week for Brockton Community Access here on the campus of Brockton High School. Of course, we're here tonight for the season opener here at Staff Gymnasium. Tomorrow night, we'll be where the gym should be <laughs> for the Brockton High Holiday Concert. Yep. Very excited for that one. Always a great concert. I've been to many, many of those concerts, and it's always a great time. Mr. Macrina and Mr. Cunningham and the folks that work in the VHS and BPS music department do a great job. You really get to see what a full, the, a fully realized music program is up there. They do a good job getting the students playing instruments and singing early on in their careers. Peterson down low, no good rebound to Jayla Smith who is assaulted by number 15, <laughs> Dominic Davis. She just ripped the ball right out of her hands. On Friday night, the boys' varsity basketball team kicks off their home slate against the Barnstable Red Raiders. And on Sunday, not many people know this one, on Sunday, the Brockton Symphony Orchestra will be performing in the Fine Arts Building in the auditorium for their holiday pops concert. Not everyone realizes we have a symphony orchestra in the city. Their holiday concert, always their best show of the year. Montron for three, Boom. it's good, and Brockton has a five-point lead. Montron's finally knocking the few down here. She's been gunning away. But Brockton's playing a little, little zone, matchup zone maybe. Montron knocking this one, it's picked up by Sarah Kelly. Kelly's shot no good, now Peterson is fouled. Brockton's played solid defense tonight. Getting their hands in the lane. Active hands, active feet. Can't count the steals by the boxer rebound. They're so plentiful tonight. As Jarvis comes in to replace Catherine Mall and Lorenzo will come out in favor of Elizabeth Williams. And this is Brockton's starting lineup here. I think Coach Conley senses that this is a critical point in the game. Jade Wint comes up with a loose ball. Fernanda is starting and stopping. Now finding Williams, and the whistle blows. Hold called against Sarah Kelly. You can see in Fernandez forced into action here a lot as a ball handler because she's the most experienced player. 
I wouldn't say she's the best ball handler on the team, though. I think uh, Liz Williams does a nice job taking care of the basketball. Brockton now in a bonus one and one situation. Marshfield with 17 fouls. Good defense there by Smith. Kelly over to Davis. Davis to Caldwell. Caldwell being worked on by Jayla Smith. Multiple boxers reached in. I think this one's going to go against Jade Wintz. Oh, that was on Fernandez. She brought her hand down. We talked about a little earlier in the game. Referees will anticipate a call. If you bring your hand down and you totally miss, there's a good chance you're going to get that foul call down you. I can tell you that from personal experience. Caldwell, 2-2 two two at the line. And a timeout called by the Marshfield Rams. Six and a half to go, 37-35. A low scoring, hard fought battle here at Staff Gymnasium between the Brockton Boxers and the Marshfield Rams. Brett, you got one left. Yep. Brett, it's been a long time since a banner's been raised here at Staff Gymnasium. One's gonna happen in January. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. Are we having a ceremony for that? We are, USA okay. Today's coming down to honor us as the number seven in the nation ranked soccer team. That's awesome. Winning the state that. title 5-2-3 against the Longmeadow Lancers. That was a crazy roller coaster. That I have heard. Season run. I went to it was wild. I went to one game. It was the one at the uh, semifinal. It was at the high school and uh, I did the varying game review. So I got to see them play a few times. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to the championship game, but what a great team. Great group of student athletes from what I'm told. I know I've met one or two of those guys over the years. All gentlemen. As are most of the student athletes at the high school. Montron in for Fernandez. Fernandez to Wint. Wint spinning around, creating nice some play. space. Down low to Jayla Smith up and in. 39-35, Brockton back up by four. Now that's how you beat a press, Matt. You pass through it. Now Caldwell, rainbow three, no good. Rebound to number 21, Ellen Nerger. This is Dominic Davis with four personal fouls to Caldwell. Caldwell. Great defense there by Williams, held her position. Now Peterson with a long jumper, no good. Wint comes down with the loose ball. Quickly handing off to Fernandez, 5.45 left. And Montron, too much mustard and a little bit too high for the Brockton guard. Brockton's going to start really working the clock a little bit for their shots. They take good shots, get good quality shots if they want to win this game. Score off of the turnovers, but when you just going into your offense, you want to get a good shot. Peterson for three in and out. Oh, Peterson's showing some range. Not a bad looking uh, three point shot there. Montron's resting her arms. Shot a lot of threes today. Peterson spin around jumper off the inbound pass. No good. Williams with the rebound. Fernandez driving down low. No good, Wint comes up with the loose ball to Lorenzo, her three is no good. She likes that spot. She does. She's hit a couple from that spot. Great Caldwell, defense there by no Williams. Good. And a tip and Williams comes up with the loose ball. Elizabeth Williams all the way in, short jumper is off the glass and in. Williams coming up big here at the end of the game. Peterson down low being worked on by four Brockton boxers, her shot no good. Fernandez is the only player in the area of the rebound. And Peterson's gonna come out now. Lorenzo reaching up, grabbing the high pass. Now in for Wint. Where's the over the back on Peterson? Loose ball picked up by Jayla Smith. Smith Ooh, overhead pass, pass to Fernandez. Help Cats, help Cats. Good job, Ellen. 
out to Wint, Wint for three. Off the front of the rim, no good. Davis comes up with the rebound and stepping over the end line. Brockton wow. capitalizing on the mistakes of the Marshfield Rams. I'm very surprised. Marshfield, it looks like they're feeling the pressure. Brockton's staying pretty calm though. Timeout called by head coach Chris Conley as the boxers had trouble getting this ball into play. 4.20 to go. We are almost halfway through the fourth quarter. Brockton with a six point edge on the third ranked team in the state. Very, very interesting story here, Matt. One's got to wonder how. You've got a new coach, you've got two returning starters from last year, four players overall, one that didn't see too much experience on varsity. Four players saw time on JV. Other than that, you got a completely new roster. Yeah, I think Coach Conley's done a nice job of putting his players in positions to succeed. As a coach, adjusting is really the name of the game. You have to adjust to your talent. You have to make adjustments in the game, and that's how you'll be successful. Uh, we've seen Fernandez and Williams handle the ball well, make good decisions. No dribble play for the boxers. Lorenzo for three, no good. Jarvis comes up with the rebound. And a foul against Lorenzo. That ball did not touch the floor after being inbounded by Annalicia Fernandez. Four passes before shot. That's what you want. You want the ball to move around. The ball moves faster than a human being dribbling. Lorenzo and Williams fighting for it. A bounce pass complete to Jayla Smith. Nice pass there by Liz Williams. Long bounce pass by Liz Williams. Now oh, Wint get gets her own oh. rebound following the shot. Fernandez nice to Wint down low Fernandez. off the glass and in. Excellent passing by the Brockton boxers. Fernandez to Wint and Wint making no mistake down low. And one. Brockton could take a nine point lead here. Wint is good, and the Boxers have a nine point lead, 44 to 35, with 3.45 left to go in the fourth quarter. With the crowd sensing that something special could happen here tonight. Montron coming back into the game, she will replace Jayla Smith. Still have a lot of time left. Mansfield hasn't really made a big run. We're waiting for them to Hit a couple shots in a row. They did earlier, but maybe two or three. Brooke Wheaton with four personal fouls comes back into the game. Caldwell down low, and Brockton creates the turnover, but Wint can't keep it in bounds. Should be a fresh shot clock, no? Ball never hit the rim. I don't know if possession changed. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Caldwell to Dominic Davis. Now five on the shot clock. Sullivan will take a three. No good. Fernandez comes up with the rebound. Fernandez fouled hard by number 41, Kate McCarthy. That is the nine, ninth team foul against the Rams, so the next one, Brockton with an automatic two shots in the double bonus. Fernandez here with a one and one situation. No good on her first attempt. Brooke Wheaton comes down with the rebound. Wheaton intercepted by Jade Went, and stepping over the end line was Wheaton. Hey, Wheaton should have let that go. It was out of bounds off of Brockton. Montron long overhead for Fernandez. Back to Montron. Montron open for three. It'll be short. Went spin around jumper. No good. Now Lorenzo coming down with the rebound to Liz Williams. Overhead fireball to Fernandez. Fernandez able to get it back to Lorenzo. 
Williams down for Wint. Wint with some space, a little floater, no good. Another offensive rebound for the boxers, and it's going to be a jump ball. Boxers are working really, really hard on the glass. That's been the difference in this quarter. The whole game, Brockton's had maybe four or five times where they've gotten more than two consecutive offensive rebounds in the same possession. Out from Montron now to Lorenzo. Over to Williams, the floor lieutenant. Now Montron for three around the world and out. That would have been big. She traveled. And a travel against Cassie Caldwell. A nine point edge with two and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter for the boxers. Starting to see some cracks in the foundation here for Marshfield, making some mental mistakes. Lorenzo to Fernandez is brought in in full clock management mode. Now Montron for three, no good. I wouldn't call that three clock management mode. This one takes a couple of bounces off the and backboard before, before finding its way in, 44-37. Nice coast to coast layup there by Marshfield. Lorenzo for three is off the top of the rim. Should have been out of bounds, but no. And Montron, Montron right there for the, the rebound. Ball. We'll have to look back at that one. The rule is if it hits the top of the backboard or the shot clock or the band that holds the net in place, it's out of bounds. It's out of bounds. Yes. And I thought I saw that one hit the top of the backboard, but Montrond is at the line for two shots. Chance to put the boxers back up by nine. Good on her first attempt, 45-37. And Sarah Kelly back into the game, and she will replace Jackie Russell, or rather, Kate McCarthy. Back two and two back. at the line for Montrond, and it's a nine point edge, 46 37 for the upstart Brockton Boxers. Kelly to Sullivan. Sullivan over to Davis. Davis back to Kelly. And foul committed by Elizabeth Williams. That was a bit of a stretch there. Of a timeout called by Marshfield with 1.39 to go, a nine point edge for the Brockton Boxers. Nothing fancy going on here, just a lot of hard work and smart basketball. Brockton's doing a good job taking care of the ball, working for a good shot, boxing out, fighting for the rebound. Marshfield's turned the ball over quite a few times in this quarter. So it's 46 to 37, the boxers on top. Again, of the third ranked in the state, Marshfield Rams. Gotta ask the question, if nothing should change here, is this a bigger win for the boxers or a bigger loss for the Rams? That's a good question. I would say it's probably a bigger loss for the Rams. It'll be a huge win for the boxers, but. Either way, this is a big team building effort for the Brockton Boxers. Absolutely. Montron comes up with the rebound. It's a great way to start your, your career for Coach Conley if you can pull this one out. It really, a win like if, if they do pull this out, really carries you for a little while. Gives you some great momentum going into the season. It's not the end of, end of the world for Marshfield. It's one game. I know they, they lost their leading scorer from last year. And that's that's always tough if you have an experienced group and you have the and Brockton loss of a lost great its, player. It's top three scorers from last year. Yes. And Jelani Jackson, Brianna Santos, and Alex Gennaros. We won't get too in depth to Gennaros this game, but as a sophomore transferring out to Tabor Academy. She was poised to take the reins of the Brockton Boxers. She was. 
And Alicia Fernandez comes up with the loose ball to Jade Went. You gotta at least get down to five seconds on the shot clock and Williams is fouled from behind against, who is it, Sarah Kelly. Good smart basketball being played here. Kaylee Sullivan called for the push from behind. Intentional foul. Intentional, so it's a tech. Yeah. So Brockton gets the shot and the ball back. And they're gonna, to Williams for the first of two is good. And it's a 12 point lead for the boxers. Boy, Williams, she's, she's a killer, huh? She's gotten stronger and more confident as this game has gone on. She walked right up to that line and hit that first free throw. I think she might have thought about what was going on in the second one. So Brockton with the ball. Brockton made a nice move there when they got the ball to Williams in the middle. There was a, a temptation to throw the skip pass. Foul committed again by Kaylee Sullivan, her second consecutive. And Williams will be back at the line. Double bonus situation. As Brockton looks to really pull away, already up by 12 with a minute eight to go. Good on her first attempt. Williams has a good looking free throw shot. Nice form. She's gonna be a heck of a player. Get to watch her for this season and two more. And the way too far ahead look. You got Jade Wynn coming back next year as well. Absolutely. Coach has got some building blocks here for a successful run. Lorenzo only a junior this year. As is Jayla Smith, so some good, really good solid building box blocks in place for the Brockton Boxers. Very young team. Only three seniors on this roster as Davis for three is good. Never say die for Marshfield, 10 point edge for the Boxers. The three seniors, nice Jasoma Montrond, Jamari Johnson and Annalicia Fernandez. So we've seen two of those three players with extended time tonight as Cassie Caldwell commits a foul. Just to stop the clock. Probably not who they wanted to foul. Williams has done a really nice job at the line. Good on her first attempt. Back up to an 11 point lead for the Boxers with 41.9 to go in the fourth quarter. One or two for Williams. Caldwell has the game. Is Coach Connolly saying no threes, don't give up a three. Out to Davis, her three is gonna come up short. Lorenzo with the rebound. And Caldwell commits a foul. Lorenzo got hit in the face, the ref missed it. A hit called against Caldwell. Lorenzo at the line. Oh, Matt, I think we can call Head this coach one. Head coach Rick Fredericks is called for no foul, no foul. Let the time expire. Chalking this one up as a big, big upset for the Brockton Boxers. Huge. For those who might be wondering, I had this game at a 12 and a half point spread. You did. The other way. You, oh, no, I don't know, Matt. That's not what you told me. You didn't You're have right. any faith I did, in this I team. did say Brockton. <laughs> I said Brockton was going to win by at least 12 and a half points. There's five seconds left. Williams is going to hold it. The buzzer sounds. And who would have thunk it? But it's 52 to 40. The Brockton Boxers with a season opening win against the Marshfield Rams. 52 to 40, the final score. Brett, what went right for the Boxers? What went wrong for the Rams? The Rams, they just couldn't play their game. That's what I, I, I got out of it. I, I think that they're a team that relies heavily on shooting, and they just they weren't dropping tonight. Their best player didn't play that well. Um, 
You know, she didn't really hit her jumpers. You can tell she's a heck of a player. She's got a great jump shot. And that, well, could, that could be a huge difference in, as the season goes along, but not tonight. It's a career opening win for newly named head coach Chris Connolly. What does Coach Connolly have to look forward to for this season and beyond at the helm of the Brockton Boxers? Well, hopefully a lot more wins. Nice way to start. But if Coach can get his team playing this hard and this smart, he's going to do pretty well. Uh, Brockton High always has the athletes, and uh, getting them on the same page is always a challenge. And if you can do that and you can get them to work hard like they did, you're going to have some success. I mean, they, they really worked the boards well. They boxed out. They made layups. They played good D. They forced the Marshfield to turn the ball over a lot. Very impressed with what I saw tonight from the Lady Boxers. Well, the Boxers moving to 0-1 on the year, getting the uh, 1-0, excuse me, on the year, getting the <laughs> big win against the third-ranked in the state, Marshfield Rams, 52-40, to the final score. Let's go get head coach Chris Connolly's thoughts on this game. We're here with head coach Chris Connolly. Chris, a huge season opening win and an upset over the third-ranked in the state, Marshfield Rams. First of all, what's going through your mind right now? Uh, we played, we really bucking down in the second half with our defense, our offense. They were taking away every time we dribbled the ball, every time we're trying to get it inside. So we kind of had to change up a lot at halftime, and it worked, and we started making the shots, and it looked really good. We played as a team a lot more in the second half. I think we were a little nervous in the first half. Talk about your floor general and what I'm dubbing your floor lieutenant, Annalisa Fernandez, the general, Elizabeth Williams, the lieutenant. <laughs> um, Annalisa was huge today. She had three colleges here watching her, so I think she was a little nervous at the start. And she settled down, and she really played well, and she did a little bit of everything. Steals, rebounds, scoring, passing. Um, you know, somebody that's played the center position the last few years is now playing a little point guard. It's, it, it, she did really well. You wouldn't know that she was a center for all those years. So uh, I'm calling it the new look Brockton Boxers. Only two returning starters from last year. That would be Fernandez and Williams. And Jade Wint um, yeah, had some time on varsity. Uh, returning varsity players. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's uh, extensive time. So the new look Brockton Boxers, really no expectations coming into tonight. And then a, a big 12 point upset over a team that was, fair to say, expected to run the table. Yeah, um, I don't think anyone in our locker room or me or any of these girls um, considers it an upset. We knew what we could do and we're starting to show it. Uh, we played really well in our scrimmage, a one scrimmage, you never know in a scrimmage, but today we, we really did well. So you got one one game ball to give out to a member of your team. Who's it going to? Annalise on her 18th birthday. Fantastic. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. And for everyone here at Brockton Community Access, my broadcast partner, Brett Gormley, our floor general in charge tonight, Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.